All right there, YouTube singers, this video will offer Italian pronunciation help for Puccini's aria from La Bohème, Mimi's second aria, Donde Lieta Uschi, uh, again from La Bohème. Um, this will, uh, if you're getting the note that your Italian is uh, substandard or you just want to hone your Italian, uh, we, will, we will go very in-depth into every word, all the tips and tricks. Uh, to get your Italian, your singing Italian to be as accentless as possible. Um, and before we do that, um, uh, let's go into the description below where I have the text written out with uh, things that are not phonetic and some important links. Some of them are shameless promotions, my own website, my own Facebook uh, fan page, um, links to my symphonies that I conduct and, and, and things like that. The most important link down there is a link to the pronunciation dictionary by Rai in Italy. I love this site and the reason is you can you yourself can type in any word and find the pronunciation. Not only does it have a sound file pronouncing every word, it points you to all the open and closed vowels and it acknowledges which I love very much the existence of non-phonetic things in Italian, namely phrasal doubling words. So uh, they will read entire sentences and show you where all the doublings are. I, I love it. I've used it for years. It's a tremendous resource. I think everybody in the world should use it. It's great. So um, when you're studying an aria, you can go in and, and go through your aria word by word. Uh, the only caveat is for verbs, you have to know the infinitive so to find that verb form. Now, there's another way um, it, with verbs and with certain formulas. There's a list. Uh, I have my own handbook. Um, Evelina Colorni came up with a, a book, Singers Italian, which is a great resource. And it also has a list of formulas of some things. Um, as we delve more deeply into this, you will see that um, on stressed vowels, there is no rule for open and closed vowels, so you, you just have to memorize things as you go along. Okay, so here we go. We First, we'll go one word at a time, and um, I'll try to go through it. Yeah, I'll just do it as, as we go through each word. I'll uh, point out some of the tips and tricks to each word. Okay, so here, here's, here's the first line. Donde. So this O is stressed, and it's closed. Uh, and as I said before, with the stressed vowels in Italian, they can either be um, open or closed. And by the stress, I mean the stress of the word, the accent of the word. So the accent is on donde. So the stress of the word could either be donde or donde, right? In this case, you have to know it's donde, it's closed. Okay? Um, the N goes into the D, as you see it sings. So N does whatever the next consonant does. Donde, and by never, ever, ever donde, you know, the way we say D in English with air going through. Italian consonants are way closer to uh, a voiced consonant than an unvoiced. Even when it's unvoiced, it's, it's as voiced as it can be, and then you slightly, uh, it's unvoiced after that. Next word, lieta. Okay, so it's open. A lot of people in speech do this closed, okay? So use your own discretion, but technically it's lieta, lieta. Now, Americans, we love to double after, we love to double the consonant after an open vowel. And that's why a lot of your teachers have probably told you to avoid this. But unfortunately, there are, there are stressed words with a single consonant, right? So you have to learn to not double, right? So how do I double the T is I stop phonation. Lieta, right? Lieta, that's double T, right? And not only that, it's an, it's an incorrect double T, right? If I were to do a proper double T, it would be lieta for singing, right? So this one's just single T, lieta. So how do we get single T is we phonate a lot on the vowel before and we just touch the T, lieta. Beautiful, right? Okay, next, ushi. Okay, so the accent is on the last syllable. Now, this sh in Italian is considered a double consonant. 
The reason being that the U has to stop for just a second. U, she, right? Now, when you have two notes, if you put the sh on the first note where the U is, it'll sound wrong in the theater. U, she, right? So you have donde lieta, U, she, no. Donde lieta, U, she. So it's the next note, the sh goes on. Okay, so technically, like anything like that, like la share, you see, la share, la share, when you say it fast, right? There's really no stop for your listener, but if you practice with the stop, make it a double consonant, it'll be way better for singing. You won't be whooshing when you should be phonating, and you won't get a note that, oh, it's not legato enough. So there's way more to just saying the sounds correctly in Italian, your vibration in Italian is uh, a very important. You see, your listener judges you by your vibration as much as making the proper sounds, the proper vowels, the proper consonants. It, they have to be in the right place on top of that. Next, al, right? So the L is with the tip of the tongue and it's high. Tuo, okay? Tuo. Again, the T is like saying duo, tuo. So it's almost where that D position is where it's voiced, and then you unvoice it. Never too o, right? Um, grido. So one D and a rolled R, right? So the rule for rolling R's is if an R touches a consonant, it is rolled. Or if it's final and nothing is after it, it's rolled. Okay? So... Grido. The other thing about R, it has the pitch that you're singing in it, and it's part of an upbeat. So the conductor or the pianist who's accompanying you does not hear the beat until you get to the vowel. So you have time before the vowel to do rolling. Most people don't roll because they think they don't have enough time. Grido. So, you know, when you're singing, you go, alto a gri. So where the E is, is where the beat is as far as your accompanist is, is uh, concerned. Okay, great. Next, d'amore. Okay, so this is a closed O on the stress. Okay, one M, one R. Now, single R, R is flipped because it's between two vowels. So any R that's between two vowels does not touch a consonant is flipped. How do we flip it? Amore. Okay, flipped R, not amore. Right, so I did just Neapolitan dialect where you have a double M and you have a rolled R, right? Even amore, right, at the end. So the E at the end is closed. Now the reason for this is Anything that is not on the stress of the word, E's and O's we're talking about, are closed. Okay? Um, in every one of these videos I do, I assume that um, we're just going to we're gonna explain everything from scratch. So, what do I mean by closed vowel? Closed vowel is either A or O, right? An open vowel is A or A, right? So, the... Um, Open O is this, right? Looks like this in IPA. And the the E, I gotta turn it around. Can't do it. I'm doing it on a video, right? So the E is the Greek E, right? That's the open E. Um that that's the way it looks in IPA. And the closed O is just like the printed O that we see every day, and uh the the closed E is printed E we see every day. So those those two are phonetic. The closed they're phonetic. They were exactly as you see them in the print. Okay, so they're closed, but they're not closed for singing, right? They're not a, hey, they're not o. Oh. They're like a hey, and o. Oh. We're talking about now the the uh, vowels that end on are in the unstressed position. Okay, not on the stress of the word. So again, the stressed vowel can either be closed or open. In this case. Amore. It's stressed, it's closed. The unstressed we know are all A and O. All closed. Okay? So now, one more thing that can add to everybody's confusion. 
you look in the diction books, and going back to Evelina Colorni's book, Singer's Italian, it's that green book you had in diction class, or the Nico Cristel books, you'll see all the endings open, right? This tradition came from uh, when people first started recording, people noted that Italian singers tended to open their unstressed for singing. It didn't mean that they sang them a ah and ah. They sang a and o, oh, but it was with the stretch of shouting. So they had to notate it somehow, right? Now, remember, anything that gets written gets exaggerated. And um, I've, over the years, I have had way more success persuading singers to close the unstressed vowels. It's just way better for singing. It keeps you on the track, right? As long as you don't close down your voice. So with all of this in mind, you do what you need to do when you sing, right? But most most time, I will find that people have a much easier time singing the unstressed closed. And as soon as you get away from your diction books and that exaggeration, your life changes, right? If you're trying to sing, ah, ah, you know, amore, it's, it's almost impossible. Okay, great. So now, there's a lot to discuss still in this word, right? Um, uh, so... Uh, the M is single, right? We already talked about the R is single. The M is single. How do I make double M? Is by phonating, right? Amore, right? So th that's double M. It's wrong, right? But I phonated. It means my my vocal cords are humming while, right? Um. So single M is the same. It's just touched. Amore. Amore. Okay, so it's a feeling. So you can actually, if you want to practice single consonants, you're getting the note from your coach, you're doubling this consonant, it's not doubled. Practice just vowels. Aore. Amore. And it feels exactly the same, the phonation. Okay, great. Going on. So in you know in these first couple lines I will I I I go through a lot of things because there are a lot of things we can do wrong besides just saying the 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 letters wrong or the sounds wrong, okay. Um, next torna. So here we have a stressed o that is closed, right? Torna, and the r is rolled, touches the n, right? Sola, again it's single l. And it's a closed O, closed O on a stress. Sola. How do I do single L? It's the same as M. You can phonate on L, it makes a double. So, alla, right? Dalla, right? Single L. I can do two L's in sola, right? As long as I phonate that L, it's double L. So, if you're getting the, the, the note that you get, you're singing double L or it's single L, Stop, try not to phonate, right? So even if I phonate it for, I'm, I'm trying to do it really softly, but if I phonate on it for just a millisecond, it's still double L. And watch. Sola, sola. It's still double L, right? Sola. You have to just get in and get out, right? Okay. Next. Mimi. Single M, single M, right? Accents on the end. Al. Solitario. So the accent of the word is on the ah, right? So that means all the o's are closed, right? Any unstressed, any unstressed o, any unstressed e is closed. I can say that. I'll say that for the rest of my life, right? Solitario. One r, not solitario, right? That's the mistake you can make, right? Solitario. Nido. Again, the accent is on the e. So the O is closed. Ritorna. Okay. Uh, stressed O. Closed. Un'altra. So notice both of the R's in ritorna. Not the, not the first R, but the middle R was rolled. And also in altra. Okay. So it's up here, right? Volta. So here we have a stressed O and it's Open, volta. Okay, great. Uh, a, 
intesere is the uh, infinitive. And I exaggerated the closed vowels, right? But a, a, also all the a, a verbs have a closed, closed vowel. Intesere, right? So inteser. Now let's talk about s. So when you speak, you can say inteser, and you can kind of hiss that s. It's fine. When you sing, you have to separate that s. You have to put the the preceding vowel completely on the note that it's on, and then you have to put the s completely on the next. So when you sing, it's inteser. And notice how I also I separated the vowel from the r. Right, because this is the way we say "r" in 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 English, right? Especially our uh, American English, right? Uh, so in and we like, you see that a lot, and you know people singing, right? So you have to separate the vowel in Okay, and then the "r" is final, so it rolls. Finti, so the "n" goes to the "t." Finti, fiore, right? So this is fior. The R is final. It's rolled. The O is stressed and it's closed. And even though it follows a semi-vowel, it's closed. A lot of o, a lot of O's and E's that follow um, semi-vowels are open, but not all. Addio. Okay, so this used to be just a. And Dio, right? But because uh, Italians tend to have strong monosyllables, now we haven't had one yet in this aria, right? But now we have a word that's actually spelled with two Ds because everybody said to God when they said goodbye, right? Farewell, to God, right? Addio, right? And then it got spelled with a double D. Okay, so ah is a strong monosyllable. You'll see it later somewhere in another aria or in this aria where it causes a double consonant. A lot of monosyllables are strong and they they form a, a double consonant. This is one that's actually written out in phonetic phonetically, right? So uh, next, senza. So the Z is like TZ and, and the E is open. Okay, uh, rancore. Close though. Rancor and final R. A lot of final R's in this aria. A lot of final R's rolled. Uh, going on. Ascolta. Now notice that I did that as a double because just for singing. Ascolta, not ascolta, ascolta. That would be that would be very very ugly in the theater, right? So again, when you speak, you could say ascolta, right? But when you sing, you have to separate. So it's a big difference, lyric Italian versus spoken Italian. Lyric Italian is sung Italian. Uh, le is a weak monosyllable. It does not cause a doubling. Le, close the, right? So it's not le poche, like you hear a lot of times people sing, right? Le is a weak monosyllable. Poche, so open O, unstressed. Robe. One B, open O. Right? We open that O, we want to double the B. Robe. No, robe. Aduna. Now, this is good because it's all single consonants, right? Lots of vowel. K. And, and this is close D. Now, note this. Here is another strong monosyllable. K. So, it's going to make the L double. K. Che lasciai sparse is the way you say, right? Che so double L. Do you see? Uh, la shai. Again, practice with the staccato on the first, right? And then connect. La shai. La shai. La shai. If, if you're in doubt, listen to Italian say these words, right? Uh, like Ischia, the islands, right? Uh, near Capri, right? Ischia. Right? It's not ischia the way we say it, right? Not la shai. The hissing doesn't happen. You separate. Sparse. Rolled R. Uh, and the A is closed. Nel. Close the. Mio. The, the uh, lion's share of the vowel is on the E, right? So you actually, you're singing 
you have one note notated, you're actually singing two notes when you sing Mio, right? I think about all this stuff. This keeps me up at night. Mio, right? Caseto. So close the diminutives are close the like museta, violeta. Uh, Caseto, right? So now you have a double T. How do we do double T? Well, we go up to the T. We don't, we almost say it like we're going to say it and we don't say it and then we say it. Right? Do we make two T's? No. You 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 know the act is okay. I am doing a double T, right? But I'm not doing caseto two T's. You see caseto. No, caseto. When I when I sing, right? When I speak, it's a different thing. Caseto, right? Caseto. When you sing, caseto. The double T is all on the next note. Okay, I, I, I see. And then the, the other mistake you can make is shortening the vowel too soon before the double T, right? I've seen, I, a lot of people come in and they're doing this. They're doing cassette. So, right? So now you're not singing, right? Boom. And then, and then that first syllable is too cut. Cassette. Cassette. Right? That's the way you want to sing. Uh, next. Stancusi. I'm doing this as one word because that's what Italians do, right? Stancusi. It becomes one word. And what happens to the N? The N assimilates, right? The N is here with the the uh, middle of the tongue. You're going to say Cusi right there, right? Cusi. What do you look at the note, the position of your tongue, middle of the tongue? The N is now not stancusi, but it's stancusi. We do this in English. We say things like inkwell, right? We're we're right there, right? Stancusi. So that's an assimilation. The N is with the middle. Don't make it with the tip because then you have to release the tongue and then come back, right? Stancusi. Uh, quel. All the wor little words like uh, the, these, like uh, quello, quella, que uh, questo, que quella, right? All closed. Uh, so the next word, cerchietto. Ce e i e o. There's your vowels, right? E i e o. So the first thing does not rhyme with, is not chair, like the seat, the chair, right? The chairman of the board. Che, right? Che, right? Cerchietto. Dor. Why? This is open. When you're talking about gold, auto, open. When you're talking about time, ora, now, or hour, right? Ora. Orario, right? Sp schedule from Greek, yeah. Uh, Doro, gold. Okay. A libro. Now I make all of this one word because Italians make it all one word. So when you have a double consonant caused by the fusion of two words, it's said like one word, right? So the double L between il and libro. A libro. You see what I mean? And it goes around your mouth, right? Preghiare. So the, this semivowel opens the vowel. Pr, the R is rolled. It's a closed E on the unstressed. It's just the stress that's, that's open. And then the final E is closed. So closed E, open E, closed E, right? Preghiare. Next. Involgi. Now, look at what happens when N is before V. Watch my bottom lip. Involgi. Now, what just happened there? I'm going to say Volgi. And this happens between F2, like Franto, right? So if I put IN before both of those, what happens? Involgi, Infranto. The N assimilates to where that fricative is going to be. I'll do it again. Involgi, infranto. Okay? So the N is never in my mouth. There's never a N in my mouth. It's on my bottom lip. Now, 
what would happen if I were trying to sing and I did put that end in my mouth, right? I would do this. I would do innavolgi in slow motion, right? So I'm trying to sing legato. Uh, in order for me to keep the phonation, I have to release my tongue. When my tongue releases, my brain says to myself, okay, legato, legato. So I have to put a vowel. So it's a shadow vowel, right? Involgi, right? So the preferable one is the one where you speak. When people don't think about it, they say involgi. You see how fast that went by? Involgi, infranto, involgi, involgi. No, see now, boom, you went out again. You went out of, uh, you went out of line. You went out of legato. Okay. Um, Many, 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 many Italians I have talked to do not know that they are doing this. And um, I, I happen to met, meet somebody, well, a lot of people who understand this phenomenon. So, so and, 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 you know, if you go to the Rye site, they do understand this, so they, they will notate it. Uh, so, uh, the O is open in this word, okay? And then the L sings into the G. Involgi. Tutto. There again is our double T, right? I go long U, I go up to the T, I don't say it, then I say it. Space, stop phonating, space, s double T. Tutto. When I speak, I can say tutto. Tutto when you sing, right? The U is longer. Quanto. So the N is with the tip of the tongue because you're going to say a T. Quanto. In un grembiale, grembiale. See, gre, the, uh, the accent is on the a, ah, the stress of the word is on the a, ah, so the e's are closed. In un grembiale. Okay, good. A, the word for and is closed. Okay, so you see two words that are just with the letter e. One has an accent, that's the word for is, right? A, it's open. A is and. Those are the first two words you should memorize in Italian. E manderò. See, manderò. The accent is on the last syllable, right? For a lot of, uh, most words end in the second to last syllable. Fewer words end on the last syllable in Italian. Manderò. And the op open vowel. Okay, future tense. Open vowel. Uh, the E is in the unstressed position, so it's an A. E mandero. Now notice the strong monosyllable causing a uh, double M at the beginning of this combination of words. E mandero. Okay? Il portiere. Portiere. Okay? Uh, I misread the word at the beginning, right? So it's closed. The first syllable is closed. And, and then it's open, right? Portiere. Okay, and the final E is closed. Bada. Bada. Right? Sharp D, but single D, B. Sotto. Double T. Il guanciale. Guanciale. Means all kinds of things in Italian. In this libretto, it means a, a pillow. And uh, it really means cheek, and it's also a part of, uh, it's a type of meat, right, from the pig. It's from the cheek of the pig. Uh, che, open E. Che. So there it is. There's that E with the accent, right? Open, it means is. It's a strong monosyllable, so you'll have two L's. Che, la. Che, la. Cufieta. Cufieta. Uh, so I have to, f for the double F, and closed E, double T. Rosa. So open O for this. Se vuoi. So it's a double V, and for double V you don't stop phonation. You just make a double V. Se vuoi, right? You don't want to be se vuoi, you don't want to stop too much. So se is a strong monosyllable. Serbarla, so a a a, right? Always good to practice your vowels. A a a, serbarla, right? 
you don't want it to be like chair, the chair vowel, right? You hear the chair vowel a lot for Americans. Sir barla, sir barla, arricordo. So now, I said that um, R's surrounded by vowels are flipped, right? So that initial R is surrounded by vowels. Why did I roll it? Well, A ah is a strong monosyllable. So now we have a double R. Um, and then the next R touches a consonant, touches a D. The O is open. So it's arricordo, d'amor, right? Closed O, same word as before. Addio, we've said this all before, right? Senza rancore, rancor. Okay, so now we will do the um, the whole sentence, right? This has a very strange rhyming, well, not a strange, but it's just, you, you, you should note the rhyming scheme that it, it goes, it goes, it goes in meter, but then the rhyme is done at the end. And what this does for Puccini is he sets you up for a very, very long phrase. For me, long phrases are not from where you breathe and where you don't breathe, but where your thought takes you. So um, for a, a singer to make a long phrase, it's how long you suspend there being a down. And I'll, I'll explain that as I read the text, right? So uh, an Italian sentence is like a wave or a phrase is like a wave crashing on the beach. So the, the wave goes, 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 and how long it goes, and then it, boom, it crashes on the beach, right? So, Donde lieta usci al tuo grido d'amore, torna sola mimi al solitario nido. So nido is the only down, right? And that's funny because that goes across the first... Uh, whole page and if you're in the Larson anthology he made a hundred page turns in every aria so it goes across two at least two and a half pages or page and a half whatever it is right uh, ritorna un'altra volta a inteser finti fior again boom addio senza rancor so this is what I mean right so you have two long long phrases and then a very short rhyme Right? So you have, a in te servinti fior, addio senza rancor. And the same pattern goes in every single verse. Ascolta, ascolta, le poche robe ad una, che lasciai sparse. So sparse is the only down. Nel mio cassetto, stan chiusi quel cerchietto d'or, e il libro di preghiere. Preghiere. Involgi tutto quanto in un grembiale e manderò il portiere. So, preghiere, portiere. Again, you have the short rhyme at the end. Bada sotto il guanciale, c'è la cuffietta rosa. Se vuoi serbarla al ricordo d'amor, Addio senza rancor. So, ricordo d'amor senza rancor. So, those are, the, those are your, your, your little rhymes at the end, your shorter rhymes. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please comment below, and please share with your friends. And as always, don't forget to go and see your coach.